We mostly think of stars as points of light on the horizon. Thing is though, sometimes they're either very close or very large, and crazily, we can actually photograph the surface. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video, I've re-edited and updated an older video that I thought the audio let the video down, and also I added some new graphics. Today we're going to be looking at some real images of stars that are more than just points of light, so let's get to it. Of course, the first star that we can photograph is our own, so it won't be news to you that the Sun, a G-class star at a distance of just one astronomical unit, is the easiest to photograph. We measure the size of things in the skies in milli-arc seconds, or MAS. As we see, the Sun has a large number of 2 million milli-arc seconds. Let's continue and now see what the stars whose surfaces have been photographed are like, and precisely how large are their own milli-arc seconds values. Next on the list is the A-type main sequence star of Altair an interesting star very much like Sirius in nature. Altair has an MAS value of 3.2 units. We must bear in mind now that the Sun was some 2 million units, so Altair appears some 625,000 times smaller than the Sun in our sky. Spinning on its equator at 296 km per second, this is evident on Altair's real-life picture. Indeed, if Altair reached 400 km a second, it would actually break apart. It's thought that the temperature on the equator is lower than around the poles, and Altair is not a binary system, although it has many companions by line of sight in the sky. Altair's close distance of 16.7 light years makes it a perfect candidate to photograph, as after Sirius, it's the largest star within 20 light years, and the star lies within the G cloud, a nearby interstellar cloud and accumulation of gas and dust. Unfortunately though, like our other A-class companion Sirius A, as far as we know, Altair has no planetary system at this point. Next on the list is Antares, a huge red supergiant. In this picture we see white areas surrounded by darker spots and a halo that seems to surround the huge red star. Antares is the only real rival to Betelgeuse in our local area on volume, and indeed it's the second most voluminous star within 1000 light years. Antares angular milli-arc seconds is 41.3 which makes it a relatively large star in the sky and appears some 48,000 times smaller than the Sun. Almost indistinguishable to the naked eye and smaller telescopes, Antares actually has a lesser known companion, Antares B, which interestingly is a blue-green B-class and very beautiful main sequence star. The pair share an orbit of around 1218 years, or approximately 529 astronomical units. The pulsations of the giant Antares A mean its radius changes by as much as 19 degrees and its temperature by as much as 150 Kelvin with each pulsation. Antares proper motion in the sky is moving relatively quickly towards us and over the millennia it will grow in brightness and indeed size in our skies. The next star on our list is even bigger than Antares and is the largest star in our local area. It's no complete surprise that Betelgeuse is not spherical. It has bulges and troughs and indeed, again unsurprisingly, it looks quite similar to Antares, with larger white, brighter areas, and then some dimmer, yellower ones. In fact, it's recorded that Chinese astronomers, as far back as 100 BC, may actually have seen Betelgeuse as a yellow star, and it's possible that the star has slowly changed colour over the years. Betelgeuse was actually the first star to have its surface photographed after the Sun in the late 80s and 90s, by John E. Baldwin and the Cavendish Astrophysics Group. In this depiction, we see an imaginary planet around Betelgeuse with a very bright blue star on the right hand side, which if you think about it would be Rigel, which is around 150 light years from Betelgeuse. At this distance, Rigel would be an incredibly bright star in the skies of Betelgeuse, shining at around minus 5 apparent magnitude, and brighter than the planet Venus in our own skies. Alpha Orionis, of course, is a magnificent star that has been studied in great depth, and the star has 40 milli-arc seconds across, meaning it's slightly smaller than Antares in size of disk, but of course this is normal as the star is further away. Next on our list is the strange and relatively unknown star of Arderardus. Arderardus is 178 light years away, and is actually the largest star visible in the sky after the Sun, with a milli-arc second of 50, plus or minus 5 depending on the day, as the star itself varies in size. Arderardus is the largest star after the Sun when viewed from Earth, so why can't we see such a star, or why indeed is it so anonymous? This is because most of its light is in the infrared. In visible light, Arderardus is a faint magnitude 4.8 to 6.6, .6, and barely visible to the naked eye. 
but in infrared is almost as bright as Betelgeuse, and is the second brightest star in the sky in the infrared spectrum. We see it has strange bulb-like features and growths, and Arderadus has a strange quirk in that its 2.77 astronomical units radius is combined with this tiny mass of just 0.7 solar masses. We must imagine that a star with the size of the orbit of Mars, yet with even less mass than the Sun, makes the star very very thinly stretched across the sky. Arderadus is a slowly rotating star as well, with just one rotation every 57 years. The next stars on our list are Rigel Contoris and Tolumen, also more commonly known as Alpha Centauri A and B. Our close proximity to them makes it easy to image. Having said that though, I have tried in very great depth to find images of them and this was the best one I could find. I presume that the stars we see here are actually the real disks of those stars. Rigel Contoris has an angular milli arc second of 8.5 and Tolumen 6, making them larger than Altair, but smaller than Antares, Betelgeuse and Arderadus. Both stars are actually approaching our sun at 21.4 km a second, and indeed one day may be visited by the Breakthrough Starshot mission. Interestingly, the entire pairing Alpha Centauri AB has a milli arc second starting from the centre of the pairing of about 3686 MAS and the system appears in the night sky to move around 20.1 MAS per year in the direction of our sun. Of course reasonably recent developments has let us know that there is perhaps a planet in orbit around Rigel Contoris and here we see a possible depiction of a super earth with Rigel Contoris star rising and Tolyman on the right visible through the clouds even on a bright day like this. Rigel Contoris or Alpha Centaur AA of course is the powerhouse of the system and is a more powerful star than the sun itself. Tolyman on the right, slightly dimmer, is less powerful than our sun. The final star on our list has an angular milli arc second of 5.8 and is a very strange star indeed. T Leperis is over 1000 light years distance from us and is an M6 red giant star with 2.7 solar masses. With an apparent magnitude of almost 10 it's invisible to the naked eye. So why is it on this list you may ask? Interesting the star is a mirror variable. This means it pulsates and can increase or decrease between as many as one magnitude depending on when you view it in the visual wavelength and as much as 2.5 times using the infrared wavelength. The reason T. Leperis has been so widely photographed is because of the stage of its life cycle. As we can see in the real picture, it has an inner area with many subsequent layers or shells, and this is because it's at the end of its red giant lifespan and going through stellar death. In other words, the star is expelling its outer shell at the rate of one Earth mass per year and will be mirrored one day in the far future by the fate of our own sun. Soon T. Leperis will stop its huffing and make one final puff, finishing its expanding nebula and left in the middle, a small white dwarf star which will slowly cool down over many many billions of years. Mix matches and hodgepodges of different stars, some huge, some light, some very high in an infrared spectrum and others very close by. All have been photographed by our own telescopes and cameras. All of these stars have real images and are not just points of light in our skies. Maybe one day we'll visit some of these wonderful stars that surround us in the universe. I look forward to that day, but before that let's hope that we see many many more images like these of the wonderful stars that surround us. Thanks for watching, consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you would like to support the channel further you could consider joining the channel, which comes with some membership perks or alternatively buy me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Many thanks to those of you who have already done so. If you have any videos or subjects you'd like to see brought to life, let me know in the comments below. Take really good care of yourselves and look after your friends and family well. I'll see you on the next one.